All right, good morning everyone and thank you for joining our webinar today. We are so excited to have a panel of experts discuss some back to school solutions for you. We have um, experts from PACTIV, experts from Cambro, Omnia Group, and we even have our very own Bill Miller, our VP of Purchasing to discuss some, some must have solutions as well as supply chains. So we're very excited to provide you consultation today. We will continue to be a resource for you throughout this pandemic. And we just ask that throughout this presentation, you do mute yourselves. Um, there will be a Q&A section in the last 10 minutes um, where you guys can write in the chat box or at that point unmute and ask questions. Um, we are very open to feedback. We would love to hear all the questions you have and we will do our best to answer them. So we do ask throughout the presentation, you do mute. And then um, with that being said, I'll let the presenters um, give themselves a little introduction, and then we'll start with the presentation. I do know that um, our friend Travis might be joining a little bit later in the presentation, so um, he will be able to do his own introduction once he joins. But with that being said, let's get started with um, Jody and Bill and Gail and Chris. If you guys could give yourselves a quick intro, um, we can start the presentation. Thank you. Sure. Good morning. I'll start. Um I'm Jody Lutz. I'm the regional sales manager for Pactive uh, Food Service Packaging in the Northeast. I'm personally based in Baltimore, Maryland, which is my hometown, um, and have been with the company um, in various sundry um, areas of responsibility for about 20 years. Um, looking forward to sharing some information that we have and certainly hearing other questions and uh, uh, identifying needs that you all may have. So thanks for giving us the time. Fantastic. Bill, I'll let you go next. Thanks, Katie. I am uh, Bill Miller. I'm the Vice President of Purchasing here at Hill and & Marks. Uh, and uh, really excited to, to have all of you on the call today, both on the manufacturing side as, uh, as well as on the customer side. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll get into it in a little bit later, but you know, our, our purpose of this is to really have a, a open conversation really with all of you about uh, that your needs that are, are still somewhat unknown, but uh, really to allow us to be in a great position to be able to service uh, everything that you're going to be looking for when, uh, when, when kids got to willing to get back to school. So um, that's it. Okay. Chris? We'll actually go with Gail. Gail, go ahead, and then we'll end with Chris. Sure. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Gail Swain, and I'm the manager for non-commercial markets at Cambro out here in Southern California. Um, I've been with Cambro a long time, a little over 30 years, actually. I tell everybody I grew up out here. But um, it's a great company to work for, and I've been in this position for about 11 years, and I really, really enjoy calling on the school market. And I know it's been a tough time for everyone, so I'm hoping that I can give you all a couple of ideas today that you could take back and make your life a little easier as you're starting your back to school plans. And Chris will let you take it away and then we'll start with your presentation. All right. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm Chris Parks. I, uh, I work for Jody Lutz. Um, I'm with Pactive. I'm the, the district sales manager up here in the Northeast. Uh, I'm based out of Nashua, New Hampshire. Um, I'm sure you can tell from my accent, I'm not originally from here. Um, I've been with Pactiv for about two years and was uh, in the Marine Corps prior to that. So, um, yeah, excited about today and uh, as we try to navigate kind of the the, the, the uncertain times, what school uh, reopenings are going to look like. So, changes daily. All right. Next slide. All right. Thank you, Chloe. Um, so kind of looking at the current future state of just food packaging um, concerning schools, uh, you know, schools across the country, um, they're, they're starting to try to figure out how they're going to do it um, and how they're going to serve students. Uh, I haven't seen anything that's very clear. Uh, I've heard certain things as they're going to segment it um, by bringing people in and different classrooms in by different times. Uh, or are they going to do it in classrooms? Uh, I even heard of a school district up in Massachusetts that was talking about the teacher serving food on plates out of bats. Um, so that's, uh, you know, they're still trying to navigate all of that. Um, manufacturers and, and, and distributors, uh, we're still trying to come up with multiple solutions. Um, 
you know, there's capacity constraints. Uh, so take phone hinge lid, for instance. So if every school district said, hey, we're going to do, we're just going to do phone hinge lid delivered to each individual classroom, um, we still would not have, not just packed it, but the industry wide would not have enough capacity to be able to provide uh, what was needed if that was the, if that was the choice. Um, so people are starting to look at different material types uh, to, you know, whether it is mineral filled polypropylene, um, does the container need to be reheatable? Does it need to be leak resistant? So it can move possibly from a cafeteria into a classroom or into a gym. Um, and, you know, we're obviously just like all of you are concerned about the, the timing of those decisions. When are, when are we going to be told uh, when's this going to come down and, and how can we best respond? So, um, you know, how do companies like Hill and Marks uh, and Pactive uh, support that new look school environment um, with it from a packaging standpoint? I mean, we're, we're all still uh, trying to wait on that decision and see what it looks like. All right, next slide, please, Chloe. So many schools, you know, um, most schools plan to reopen up here in New Hampshire. Uh, the, you know, as an, as an instance, the governor has said, we're going to, uh, you know, we will reopen schools, but he's leaving it up to the individual school districts. Um, so, you know, you can look at the chart there and see how some schools are starting to, to dissect this and how they're going to tackle it. Um, and that first one, you know, already implemented 24% are gonna eat at the classroom or desk only. So, you know, when we look at that, is that an individual tray? Is that an hinge lid container coming into that, that classroom being delivered? Um, and we're all still waiting on the, the schools to decide and school districts to tell us what, what those decisions are going to look at. Um, the, the last one there on there on the, on the chart there, uh, developing rotating schedules when certain guests are allowed to visit uh, and, you know, when they're going to be able to get into the, into the lunchroom, there is a, there you've got a time constraint issue, you've got a space issue. And, um, I, you know, I don't know that schools are going to be able to come up with that. So right now it looks like the majority are going to just plan to eat in the classroom and try to keep those, uh, those students together and not have them walking around the school. Next slide, please, Chloe. And kind of looking at the school's uh, reopening planning, um, I want to draw your attention to the right side of the slide and, and some of the challenges. Obviously, safety is is the biggest concern. It's a concern for parents. It's a concern for teachers. Um, you know, they, some teachers are saying that this is not an issue. I'm well, I'm ready to go back. And some teachers are, are saying no. Um, so, you know, one of the other things is that there's a child care. So some, they're talking about going to possibly even just two to three days a week. Um, and, and what does that look like? Uh, there is, you know, if the students aren't able to go, then parents are just sitting there at home wondering what I'm going to do with my kids for, for three or two, two or three days a week. Um, so there's there's multiple things. And I'd also like to draw your attention down to that, that bottom bullet. Um, you know, schools, districts are worried about financial losses. So in the past, we've all kind of had the foam uh, school lunch tray. It's, uh, it's a very economic option. And if they have to go to something else, what is that going to cost a, a school district? Um, how are they going to fund that? So these are all all things that the that the schools and the the you know the political leaders are concerned about right now. Next slide, please. Okay, so you know we're looking at the uh, school feeding options, and right now we're thinking that the uh, the best cost option is the uh, the foam school lunch tray. So. You know, we've got a picture here uh, on the right side of the slide of it being, you can slide these in uh, to those carts um, and then these can be wheeled into a classroom. Um, 
you can also, you know, if you don't have a lid, stack these on top, uh, another tray on top, and then possibly, you know, if you wanted to make sure that they weren't sliding off, uh, you could put a sticker on either side, like a tamper evidence sticker. So you would all you would have a cover essentially of just one school lunch tray on top of another. I know that this has worked in the past uh, when when I was um, when I was in the Marine Corps and they would bring us uh, to go trays. This is exactly what they would do. So I'm very familiar with it, very comfortable with it, and, and it works. Um, you know. He, we used it to keep sand and bugs out, um, but obviously I think just moving from, from a, a cafeteria to a classroom, it would be equally uh, effective. Next slide, please, Chloe. And here, uh, you know, Bill and I were, were talking about this last night via email, um, this, this tray with a lid on it. So. While this lid fits the tray, it, it doesn't necessarily just fit completely secure. So what we're looking at would be a best one of the best options would be to have the kind of those tamper evidence stickers that we were talking that I mentioned earlier um, on either side of the school lunch tray, you know, and then provided by Hill and Marks. Um, it's it's something I know. I think when your food gets delivered to your house uh, via Uber Eats or something, they put that sticker on the bag. Same same type of concept, just on each tray. Next slide, please. Hinge lid containers. Um, so this is something that, that, you know, with the, I mentioned the foam capacity earlier from a foam hinge lid perspective. Uh, MFPP, um, this is a, it's a very good option, especially if the food needs to be reheated. Um, you know, this has a, has a high temp uh, up to 250 degrees. Uh, it is, you know, they can they can move it so if they had to even bring it cold from the the lunch room and into the 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 classroom if it needed to be reheated if there was a microwave or some some sort of thing in the classroom it could be reheated uh, if necessary you know because the foam uh, doesn't have such a high heat point as the uh, mineral filled polypropylene multiple sizes available um, and we think this is a, a really good option. Chris, it's Jody. Um, I'm just going to jump in because I was um, communicating with Kate on a, a really valid concern around, you know, hey, um, we're looking for non-foam options. Um, one one consideration for this product group in general, and um, you know, while we hope that uh, you'd consider Pactive with Hill and Marks, understand that there is a lot of mineral-filled product in the market. This is considered green in in two ways. Um, one is polypropylene is a highly recyclable um, material, very easily. Most municipalities um, allow for recycling of this product. The other thing that's important to note about this product and the reason that it has a kind of an opaque or off-white color or black obviously has an additive to it, is um, we use a, a talc um, component mixed with the resin. Talc is just an inert material um, that adds strength and rigidity, but it also allows us to reduce the amount of the resin, the plastic material, the polypropylene that's in the package. So you have a, a little bit of a, a reduction in, in plastic, up to 40% over a standard polypropylene material. So I just wanted to let you know that there is a green story for this product line if this sounds like something that might work for you too. Sorry, Chris, keep going. No, thanks, Jody. All right, next slide, please, Chloe. Uh, the this um, our pet lunchbox. Um, you know, obviously, looking at it, you can you can see what's inside of it. Uh, you know, our pet. The R stands for recycled. Um, so this is already made from recycled material. You can you can see what items are in it. Now, the only one of the issues with this is that is that is from a heat tolerance perspective. Um, you know, if you are trying to reheat this or serve hot food, it's not going to uh, it's not going to hold up well. That being said, you can see it's kind of like the handle on it, so it's easily transported from a, uh, a cafeteria to uh, a classroom if that if that's required. Next slide, please, Chloe. 
And then our two and five compartment molded fiber school ashtray. Um, this is something that uh, we, uh, we came out with um, in the latter part of last year. It is, um, you know, it's PFAS free. A lot of school, a lot, not even school districts, but a lot of municipalities are starting to look at banning uh, PFAS uh, in, in products. Um, and, and this is made in the USA. So, you know, it's one of those things uh, we went with, we originally came with a five compartment, but we can't, we developed a three compartment. One thing that we saw schools doing was they didn't really need all five compartments. Some of the things like fruit, like apple slices and stuff like that were pre-packaged. Um, so we didn't need a, a necessarily a compartment for that. We could just put it on this, this larger tray. It also, you can tell with something like the, the pizza. I know when, when I was growing up, when you would go to, you'd have those big square pieces of pizza that you would have as your cafeteria. Everybody always looked forward to. Um, I don't really know what they were made of, but they were they were pretty good. Uh, but you know, this is an option for those uh, because you've got larger compartments. Uh, you just don't have so many. Um, molded fiber and uh, is made right here in the United States. All right, next slide, please, Chloe. That should be our last one. All right, thank you all very much. Thank you very much, Gail. Take it away. Gail, I think you're muted. All right, sorry about that. So the reason I, I put this slide up there was just to remind everyone that Cambro is an, um, an American manufacturing company. And, and what that means for you is that about 99% of the products that you order from us are manufactured in the United States. I wanna let you know our production is robust right now, as you can imagine with the start back of school, but we have a, a good stock and a good quantity of products available. And so uh, for many of our products, you're able to place your orders and get your um, orders delivered fairly quickly. Uh, next slide, please. All right, so we're just gonna take a look at um, some of the common uh, scenarios that are out there um, and think different things that we're hearing about uh, what it's gonna look like for, for students going back to school. I'll give you uh, some ideas of how our products can be used to help you uh, facilitate your whatever feeding methods you choose and then give you some product ideas and, and share a few stories with you about what some of the other districts across the US are doing. Next slide, please. Okay, so as we've seen the coronavirus serving trends uh, since uh, school stopped in March and throughout uh, the, even the summer, uh, uh, it turned into um, uh, curbside feeding, right? Um, for a while it was every day and then it was a few days a week and then it even went down to one day a week. Um, so mobile transport was very important, um, you know, from a kitchen pack out to d designated serving areas, whatever that looked like. Um, there was even home delivery done via buses and other vehicles and actually any kind of remote feeding. So anywhere outside the CAF where it worked to get uh, food to students, um, everybody just chipped in. And the big takeaway on that was, you know, we're going to be flexible, we're going to be strong and we're going to make it work. And um, as we've seen all across the United States, you all did an amazing job. And thank you for everything that you that you continue to do for students. Um, next slide, please. Okay, so what um, what is school feeding going to look like as students return? Um, well, if you've seen the news, I'm sure you saw that out here in California, um, several of our districts have chosen to remain at a virtual level when they go back. And so um, many of those uh, summer feeding trends and uh, earlier in the year trends will continue for, for uh, the different school districts out here. But in many other places across the United States, um, there are all different sorts of ways that they're hopefully going to get students taken care of. And so we hear, you know, blended learning where half the students are going to be on campus, half will be e-learning, um, half days um, out uh, in our Central Valley here. A lot of our districts are going to an A-B schedule. So the children will go to school half day in the morning. Um, they'll pick up lunch. Uh, at the door as they leave for the day and then students coming in 
for the afternoon schedule will pick up their lunch and take it to class and then they'll be given a, a breakfast for the next day and then um, we've also heard some districts are doing pre-k to to grade five or six on campus but middle schools and high schools will continue to do e-learning uh, until it is safe for everyone to return and uh, we've also heard about you know students on campus uh, smaller districts and there are a lot of smaller districts out there are figuring out ways to bring more students to campus but with smaller classes repurposing different areas like uh, you know multi-purpose rooms libraries gyms places like that uh, to be able to spread the students out and and uh, get them fed and of course with social distancing uh, next slide please Okay, so uh, as we as we talk with different folks, you know, we, we have asked a lot of questions to try to figure out um, what uh, what ideas we could share to make things easier for everyone. And um, you know, we've also talked to different school districts to say, you know, like what are you doing that you might be able to, uh, or we might be able to share with others that they could, you know, implement as well. And one of the things that has continued to come up is what can you repurpose? You know, budgets are going to be tight. Everyone is watching everything, and yet they need to be able to, to get students fed. So I want you to think about, you know, what items do you have that you can repurpose um, to use for other things? And also, if, if students are still going to continue to be involved, for example, if you're doing breakfast and lunch in the classroom, um, what do you have that the, the little ones can move um, to get from the cafeteria to the classroom? So when you're looking at different items that are mobile, we have to make sure that it's light enough for the small children to be able to move. Next slide, please. All right, so um, before we get into that, I just want to mention here, you know, nobody has enough shelving, right? Cambro has a robust, a robust line of uh, three different lines of shelving. Um, and what's nice about our shelving is that we uh, mold an antimicrobial into all the shelf plates. And so this, uh, you know, is great for sanitation. Also, because those shelf plates come off, they're very easy to wash. Uh, everything is um, able to go through a dishwasher. It's a very simple to clean and take care of. And um, because sanitation is so important, this is just one more layer in your kitchen to make sure that everything is safe and, and ready to feed the children. And on the next slide, um, we uh, also have, a, uh, we talk about the fact that our storage is more like a system. And so you start with your shelving and then you build it up with all the different storage products that we have. Um, and, and again, everything is dishwasher safe, so it's very simple to take care of. Um, what's nice too is with all these clear products and and uh, we have sliding lids and so we want to get uh, produce that you're serving out of uh, the boxes and into um, the clear boxes so so that you, it's uh, clean and you can see it and also cuts down on food waste that way. And then also if you are feeding any students that have allergies, uh, we do have an allergen management system available, and so anything that you that you're making that you have to um, do a special way, you can store in the allergen management products. Next slide. Okay, so just breakfast, lunch in the classroom. Um, there's a lot of different ways to do that, and so we're going to go through a couple of of ways that can make it simpler for you and keep the food at at temperature and, and make it easy to move around. Also, as we're talking about this, for those of you that have all the cart programs, think about maybe what some of these items might be able to uh, help you continue to do your a la carte program, as well as feeding children that um, are on, on the, the school lunch program. Next slide. about hand washing. Um, there are several different styles of hand washing here. Think about maybe where you might want to put these hand washing stations as relate to how you're feeding the children. So we have uh, something as simple as the, the product on the your left, which is our hand washing station. Um, and then the one on the right, which is at one of our uh, beverage servers with a a uh, soap and paper towel dispenser on the top, which is very simple to use as well. That can be placed anywhere. And then our larger hand sink card in the middle. This one 
uh, we are making now with a foot pump that's available too. So this can be placed in, in any areas where you have more high traffic. Next slide. Okay, these are our different transport items. On the left, we have our EPP carriers. These are extremely lightweight, very economically priced. They're great. Uh, the milk crate there at the top has been selling like crazy. So you're able to uh, have hot and cold food stored in the top loaders there, and then you also have your milk containers, so you have a complete service system. Our go bags, um, you all are familiar with insulated bags. These, This is our version. Um, they've been doing very well. They come in many different sizes and accommodate a lot of the containers that Pactiv was talking about. And then on the right, we have our insulated transport systems that you might be might more familiar with. It's more the hard-sided system. Um, there's a lot of different capacities depending on what you need. This is also great, too, if you're using a kiosk or something like that. To, uh, to hold backup product. Next slide. Okay, and then these are our newest DPP products. So you see the flip lid there on the left, which will make serving foods even simpler. You don't have to take the lid off to be able to pull product out to serve the kids. And then if you are doing a smoothie program or anything like that on the right, we have our drink holders, which will fit nicely in that container there. And so you're able to, you're still able to do smoothies and keep them at temperature so that you can serve a great product to your kids. Next slide. Okay, this is another way you can get a lot of children fed. This is our flex station. These are very flexible uh, items that um, they're made from our shelving material. Um, this is great to serve breakfast or lunch. We've been selling a lot of these uh, throughout this, uh, this season because they are so flexible. You can use them for breakfast. You can roll them out to the curb if you need to. You can roll them through hallways. You can set them up any way that you want, hold, uh, add cam chiller so you can hold milk and yogurts and things like that to give the kids a great variety. And um, there's also a merchandiser as well to um, make it more, you know, pleasing to, to the children. Next slide. Okay, and this is just another couple of other shots of what the flex station could look like. So we have several different variations. Next slide. And there is a promotion going on right now. So if you do purchase one of our flex stations, you're you're able to receive two free cases of food pans, full-size food pans or food boxes to uh, to be able to help you set up your flex stations. And those are at your, no charge. And the reps up in the New York area can tell you more about that. Next slide. Okay, and here's another option for you for moving meals around. This is a, one of our ultimate cheap pan racks. We had a district in Ohio that just bought 50 of these. Um, they're going to be loading up meals on, on sheet pans, um, put it in the sheet pan rack and, and put an insulated cover over it and hold meals until ready to serve. So this is a great way to uh, move what I like to call max load so you can get as many meals moved as you need to. This is great for breakfast and lunch programs as well as feeding at the curb if you have to do that. Next slide. Okay, also think about those of you that have been using salad bars, they can be repurposed as grab and go stations, or pre pack stations. Um, they are great for moving bulk products. We just had someone tell us that without the top on, the, uh, a station can move about 400 uh, sack meals out to the curb for service. So uh, those of you that have salad bars, just be thinking about other, other things that you could do with them besides them being a produce bar. Next slide. Okay, also, as you said, it's another shot of our, our Versa bars without the top, so you can see different ways that you can serve. You can also set them up to be, uh, well, you know, serve water to your children and things like that. And then one more thing about water, I'm hearing a lot about how are we going to be able to serve potable water to the children. Um, think about using uh, beverage servers, and uh, there's a little piece called an easy serve that fits over the spigot and your children can just put, um, push that, um, fill up their water bottles or whatever they have so it's touchless and take that, take that back to class as well. Next slide. Okay, and then we do have also a line of kiosks. So if you're needing to spread children out and get them in different parts, if you're um, different parts of the, of the hall to, to make sure social distancing is, is intact, um, there, we have a lot of different kiosks and carts that you can use as well. Next slide. Okay, and this is just more of a variety. Uh, they're great also at curbside. 
that uh, photo in the lower left corner is actually one of our school districts out here in California. That's how they did their curbside feeding throughout the spring and into the summer. Next slide. And I just wanted to give you a preview here. This is our brand new kiosk card. Uh, we are in the process of getting it ready for launch right now. It's a nice new sleek look and uh, again, great for all sorts of feeding. What's nice about this, the way it's made is you could also set it up as a hot bar if you wanted to. There's a lot of holding area in the back and it will also hold some of the EPP units that I showed so that you can hold hot food and just bring it up to serve. Next slide. Okay, um, just a larger bulk transporting uh, of our larger carts. So you can see there on the right, it does a nice job of holding the, uh, the meal pack carriers that you might be moving around. Um, the one on the left holds uh, sheet pans or hotel pans, again, just to give you the ability to serve uh, large quantities or hold food as backup uh, to, to restock on your kiosk carts if you're, if you're using carts. Next slide. Okay, so um, these are just key takeaways, take and these will be on the uh, the uh, sheets. And this this presentation will be available will be available for you. So the key takeaways you can go over at your um, at your leisure. So I know I'm a little over, Katie. So thank you. <laughs> That's it. No problem. You had a ton of helpful information. Um, and Bill, let's start with the supply chain. Thank you. Thanks, Katie. And uh, you know, thank you, uh, Chris, Jody, and Gail for the for the information, and, and thank you everyone else for uh, for joining us today on this call. Um, so I'm going to take you through um, really just some some brief updates on what the supply chain looks like for product, which really prompted us to have this webinar and uh, and share some of this information with all of you, as well as some uh, some new products that Hill and Marks has brought in uh, due to the pandemic that, that many of you might not be aware that we we now have. Uh, so just first on the supply chain, uh, as, as things have really changed significantly over the last four or so months, um, it, it felt it really important to share with all of you that a lot of our manufacturers have either slowed down or shut down production on some of the items that you may have been used to, uh, items that are just no longer being purchased. And I, I believe that the team at Pactive is, is part of that, where if they have not been, uh, if they haven't been receiving order, they, they, they closed or slowed down production on those items. So. As we move forward, it's it's very important for our sales team uh, and for Hill and Marks to understand what it is you're going to be looking for for your solutions in uh, in in late August and September, because we're going to need to ramp up uh, with our suppliers to make sure we have that product on order. They have manufacturing uh, ready to go, and it, that uh, we have as few hurdles as possible uh, as uh, as kids hopefully come back to school in the fall. Uh, with that, right now, lead times have been extended. Uh, you know, things that used to take us uh, one to two weeks to get uh, can take words, uh, upwards of three to six weeks to get. This is not to scare you. Uh, this is not to make you nervous. This is just, again, to share some information and really understand the importance of the communication uh, between our sales team and yourselves. Uh, you know, we are here to help. We, we are truly here to help, and we've been doing that with, uh, with our other customers over the last several months. And the more information we have ahead of time, the, the better we will be able to service all of you. Uh, and, and the other real purpose about the, you know, this, this webinar, and, and I think Chris nailed it earlier when uh, he was talking about styrofoam, the, the capacity for what a lot of the manufacturers are able to supply right now is, it has, is, is a finite level. So if all of a sudden you have half the school districts in the state of New York all trying to go after one or two solutions, uh, we, we can assure you, and, and Chris confirmed this, that there is not enough capacity to be able to handle that. So what we have been doing uh, over the last uh, three to four months, uh, myself, my team, the sales team, working with our customers is really finding solutions. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, that's really the purpose of this webinar is to, um, uh, identify some of the challenges, which I think Chris, Jody, and Gail have done a fantastic job. Uh, all of you challenges right now, and really, we're really looking to understand right now how we can take what we know uh, and apply it to the items and such that we that we will be able we will be able to get uh, in in the coming weeks. Uh, next slide, Clay. Keep going. So I just want to start with uh, the Ratmaster Duo. Uh, you know, this is a really a, a great functional item, and I 
you won't see a lot of this product because I think that, that Gil and, and Chris really went ran through a lot of things. But the reason I bring this item up, um, it's really a great option right now for all that is going on. Uh, first off, from a space saver, it can hold, hold two rolls, uh, whether it's a, aluminum or plastic or, uh, or aluminum or, uh, or film uh, or two of the same. So it's a space saver. But most importantly, it's easy to clean and sanitize. It is, it is a hard surface and it's also dishwasher safe. So uh, this is an item that we carry here at Hillmarks. There are contracts available for schools that you can work with our sales team on, but it's a relatively new item in the marketplace. I wanted to make sure that you were aware of it because it, it does provide a solution and it is easy to clean and disinfect. Uh, next slide, Chloe. So PPE, many of you might not uh, have thought of Hill and Marks as a place to get PPE. I can tell you over the last several months, uh, you know, we have really uh, stepped up and supplied a lot of our customers with these items that you can see here. And, and some of you on the call might not be responsible for purchasing these products, but certainly wanted to make sure that you were aware that we have them. Uh, we are carrying uh, three ply masks for both adults and we will be carrying a children's mask as well. Uh, we have a see-through mask that we are working on right now that we should have in stock be, by, the, uh, by the time school goes back, which will allow students to see uh, uh, whoever's wearing it, their mouth, uh, to be able to, to read lips and, and help with communication. Face shields, goggles, and even bouffants and gowns and, uh, and shoe covers. So again, not something you might have thought of for Hill and Marks, but as you're all having these conversations about trying to understand how you're going to facilitate some of your needs, we are here to, to serve, service all of you with this product. Next slide, please. Uh, we know temperature check and hands-free. These are very big topics of conversation right now. We've been experiencing this with our, with our uh, businesses and uh, restaurant community over the last several months. Uh, we have these in stock as well. We have uh, small infrared handheld devices that can uh, scan within three inches of the, the person's head as well as this rich tech device, which is a, a full body scan you can walk up to and, and it gives you within three seconds, it gives you a pass or fail in terms of your temperature. Uh, you know, again, your Hill and Marks representative can, can take you through this further, uh, but wanna again, share just some of these items. Uh, Hands-free is very big as well. We've got these items that are available, where, which allows users to open doors and even lift toilet seats without actually having to touch them. Uh, and again, items that, you might not have thought of about uh, Hill and Marks 4, but we do have in uh, available to all of you. Next slide, Katie. Chloe. Uh, social distancing signs as you're as you're getting back and getting your school set up. Again, we have uh, these signs and these cones in stock. Uh, again, many of our businesses and our restaurants have already been utilizing them. These are made of a nice heavy material that allows you to. Uh, uh, to put them up and know that they're not going to get torn apart uh, as people are walking past them. They're they're made to last. Uh, they can be placed on the ground or they can be you know held uh, put up on walls as well. And are again just a, a nice way to be able to set up your schools as uh, as students come back. Next slide. Uh, we're also working on some uh, anti pathogenic products. Uh, these are products that can be laid on surfaces and help to continually disinfect the uh, the surface over a period of time. There's a little bit of maintenance that needs to go in into these, but uh, in terms of just wiping them down at the end of the day, but uh, these are products that we are bringing in later this uh, later in the summer. Uh, they also offer desk shields. We have availability to both ones that have anti-pathogenic uh, and, and that do not, uh, if those needs do arise in your school districts. Next slide, Cliff. Uh, this was the uh, the hands-free opener, so you can move to the next one. And uh, that, that's really just some of the key products. You know, again, I think the um, the the real key to right now is is learning. Uh, we are we are learning what all of your needs are going to be. Uh, we open uh, we are open to questions. We are open to search for solutions with all of you. Uh, the biggest point for me and for my team here at Hill and Marks is what what I started with the supply chain. And the earlier we know what your needs are going to be or what you believe they're going to be, and the sooner that we know that, the better we will be able to supply you to make sure that that product is coming in in advance and uh, and you have it for when you are ready to open. So with that, Katie, I'll pass it back to you. Thank you, Bill. Fantastic information. A lot of solutions we presented throughout this presentation. So now is the time for you guys to ask us any questions. We are here. 
We have our VP of Sales, Joe Waite, on the call as well. So any questions that you guys may have, feel free to write in the box and um, we'll address them as best we can. Don't be shy. Actually, I'll start with the questions uh, for Gail on the Cambro products. What is the lead time that uh, as, as schools are potentially thinking about some of these options from Cambro? What is the lead time that uh, that Cambro has on them so that they can plan accordingly? Right. Well, right now, um, for the items that are not considered stock items, um, we have you know two warehouses, uh, East and West Coast. Um, on the the larger roto or the kiosk, you know the kiosk type items, our lead times are running about three to four weeks. So I would encourage those of you that are planning on starting school, you know, around the last of August, first of September, to get your orders in in the next week or two, so we can make sure to take care of you. We did get um, a question. School lunch programs and school in general are in a pretty scary financial situation. Are you considering sales, deals, bid pricing, et cetera? That's probably to all of us, I would guess. <laughs> um, I, I can speak to uh, just from, uh, I don't know if Daniela is on the call or if, Joe, if you want to handle it, but you know, I know we are working with our with our suppliers on uh, on a lot of these, what I would call uh, new or hot items to try to reduce costs as, as greatly as possible. Uh, we've been doing that on, on PPE uh, in general, uh, on all of our products. Um, I know that, that Millennium, uh, uh, mineral filled item that um, uh, Jody and Chris had talked about before. You know, we have set that up on a program. Uh, you know, and, and Joe and team, uh, sales team. You know, I guess we we could take individual uh, individual needs uh, as they come along and try to work with all of you to to satisfy uh, your budgets. And I would say for us, um, besides the promotion that we're running that I mentioned earlier, uh, we always try to help folks by presenting a good, like a good, better, best scenario. You know, with our uh, insulated transport items, for example, we have our bags, we have our EPP products, we've got our hard-sided insulated carriers, which, you know, all of those are going to be really important. We also have several different lines of shelving. Um, we actually uh, were able to, on that flex cart, we can build that with two different types of our of our shelving materials. And so we can help you with that. And I mean, we work with you to make sure that um, what you need is there. And, um, you know, we do help with uh, just tr trying to troubleshoot, think out of the box. And again, like I said, think about what you might be able to repurpose for right now too, even, you know, shelving units, anything I've uh, heard a lot, anything with casters is king right now, you know, anything you can move to get product from point A to point B. So we just help you brainstorm too and kind of share ideas about what other districts are doing to, to make it easier for you. And I and I will say from from a, a a bid perspective, I do know that our contracts and bids team, as as we're seeing different things, new technologies, new items that Bill and and our purchasing team have been able to secure. I do know that that Daniela, who is our contracts and bid supervisor, um, and and the rest of her team are actively sending information out to the the school systems that they are working with currently. Um, so if you're not a current Hill and Marks uh, customer, certainly reach out to us and we're happy to help you in any way that we can. Thank you all for that information. We did have another question. Megan asked, what solutions do you have available for schools that still would like to use their reusable plastic trays, but will be having small children carrying them in the hallways? Any type of covering for them? Sorry, I was muted. Uh, you know, I would, um, off the top of my head, uh, I would say that there, I don't see any um, molded tray cover, but, uh, you know, we can certainly look for that, Megan, and um, uh, and thank you for the question. Uh, we can certainly look for that option. I think the, uh, the you know, if you're looking for something besides having small children carry the, tr carry the trays, I think Chris actually showed a pretty good solution before. Uh, with having the the uh, the tall rack with the um, you know with the panels over it, that uh, you know could be an option as well.
but uh, we can certainly look into some options. I mean, obviously, you've, you've, there's some inexpensive, I would say, uh, foil and film, but uh, an actual tray itself, a uh, tray cover itself, we'll have to look into that for you. And um, if possible, uh, letting us know the dimensions of the types of trays you're looking for and working with, uh, if you are a customer, working with your Hill and Marks rep, if not, uh, feel free to reach out through Katie or reach out directly to me and uh, we can get those dimensions and try to find a solution for you that will that will fit. And I just, uh, uh, from a, a reusable uh, point, Cambro does have uh, one compartment tray that has a lid that fits it and a couple of different materials, uh, you know, depending on the budget. And then we've got a couple of uh, other ones, we call them our meal delivery tray line. Um, that also have lids and, and they're also in a couple of different materials. Um, wow. We also have kind of like a, a, a little uh, three compartment tray with a lid too. So there, if that's something that you think you might want to see a sample of, our sales reps in New York State can certainly get samples for you too. And those are all dishwasher safe. Bill, to, to kind of echo what you were saying, um, I think, you know, film, uh is is always a good option because you can you can wrap a reusable tray with it and if there if you were to have a plate even if it was just a flat tray that they put a plate on if you put that film over it should hold that plate in place as long as that film is tight uh the only issue with that would be if the, the, the depending on the, the temp of the food um in which case you probably want to use foil but um uh, i think that's that's uh, a very viable option and, and probably also a, a, a cost-effective option as well. Fantastic. And then another question was, how can we get contact information for suppliers? So I will say that everyone on this call will be getting a follow-up email with a recording of this presentation, a PDF of this presentation, some follow-up materials, and um, we will list the um, suppliers on this call with their contact information in a, in a follow-up email. So that's one way. Um, and then another way would be reaching out to your sales, your Helen Mark sales rep and, and having them be a liaison for you. All right, any more questions? I think we might be good. Well, thank you everyone for joining and spending some time with us this morning to talk about solutions. Um, and also, we hope, we, found, we hope you found this valuable. I wanna thank our presenters. We are very grateful to you for sharing this information with us today and partnering with us to help provide solutions. So kudos to you and thank you for, for helping us out. And thank you again to all of our customers for joining. We will be sending this out in a follow-up email and um, we hope that you are all staying safe and healthy during this time. So thank you guys so much and I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day. Thanks, Katie. Thanks, Katie. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.